الله الرحمن الرحيم نرحب بالسادة الحضور في هذا اللقاء الشيق طبعا اخترنا هاي المكان لتغيير طبعا نرحب الى اكثر عدد نتمنى ونتشرف بالدكتور مصطفى يحضر يفتتح لنا هذا اللقاء بكلمته فرحبوا به بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عليكم السلام في البداية أطلب منكم تكون لحظة حداد تقرون الفاتحة على روح داينامو الجمعية المرحوم على وشبر أول شيء أشكركم وبالنسبة لأخونا سيد على وشبر راح نعمل برنامج حتى نخلد ذكراه وراح تعرفون عني إن شاء الله أبغي أرحبكم ترحيب كبير وسعيد جدا إن عندنا هالعدد من الشخصيات المميزة لحضور اجتماع شهري نعتبره روتيني فهاي شيء جيد ويدل على اهتمامكم بالسلامة وأن المحاضر ممتاز أشكر ياسر صفار مدير شؤون الأعضاء من يوم ما مسك هالبرنامج الحمد لله العدد قاعد يزيد ومشاركات الأعضاء معنا أكثر فالشباب مع الوسائل الاجتماعية جيدين ويوصلوننا بسرعة حتى أنا بعد يوم ما شفت دعوة جاتني قلت لازم أيكم فأشكره الكلام عن السلامة شيء رائع لأن السلامة تهمنا كلنا في البيت في الشارع في المنزل آخر شيء إذا عندكم أي برنامج في بالكم تبون نحن في الجمعية نسوي أو أي شيء يقوي العلاقة بيننا يشرفنا خبرونا وأكرر ترحيب بكم وسعيد جدا أن أشوفكم ومعنا هاي لقاء شهري روتيني يدل على مدى نجاح جمعيتكم جمعية السلامة أتذكر أول ما بدينا 79 مع أخوي علوي بين الأجانب والبحرينيين ما كنا نجمع 30 نفر في مؤتمر فشيء رائع نشوف هالعدد الجميل مشكورين We don't have any plan for any emergency for today, tonight. If you hear any fire alarm, please be calm and please respond to the emergency response which is located in car parking. And I would like now to welcome Mr. Muhammad Shikri. Muhammad Shikri is an awarded winner speaker, a professional trainer and consultant with more than 40 years experience. He was the winner of, from Washington, in 2006. He is one of the best speakers was the, in the Toastmaster and we really appreciate it. Did he stop? Did he stop after that winning? No. He started publish and help Bahrainis and non-Bahrainis in this country and outside the country to publish his experience. Why? Because he wants your benefit. Why? Because we need everyone to be safe and return back home safely. Mr. Mohammed, please welcome. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Very good evening to you all. Thank you for coming all. Was it difficult to find Al Ayam Hall? Difficult? Easy? Okay, you came anyway. Did you put on your safety belt? You don't have to answer this one. <laughs> no need. <laughs> but we need to answer something else. It's a very good gathering, very special gathering. And thank you for your beautiful words. Thank you very much. Now, what I want from you, every two people, get to know each other quickly. Just your position and ask him one question, one question. 
what is what makes a safety leader safety practitioner successful successful one thing take his opinion take her opinion and come back to me you have one minute one thing that makes you successful in safety one element so can you come back to me can you come back to me okay na bik tsir najm qeddam al camera ma ale ايه عادي ولدي ايه محمد احمد yes. uh, safety permit work coordinator on تطوير and i would like to share the answer of my partner colleague in the seats mr Good. ali hasan from alba yes. and he uh, says said a very important thing to success the safety in, in the workplace that the safety practitioner being part of the team means he is involved and the planning from the beginning he knows why the decision has been made wow. and from wow. there he can make the safety work beautiful so he's part of the team team player it's not only me huh team player very good give him a big hand give it to muhammad someone else one success one element of success of safety what makes safety people successful yeah. okay name habibi abd rahman banna from tatwir petroleum again mashallah alayk okay so actually the success is to start with you, your behavior, yourself. If you are, if you are getting the safety to yourself, then yeah. you can apply that to committee. Beautiful. So when you become a role model, when you put the seat belts, huh? when you wear the gloves, when you apply safety yourself, that's the biggest power you have as a safety practitioner. Give it to Abdurrahman. Abdurrahman, sahih? <laughs> MashaAllah. One more. Basim Al Khair, senior research specialist from Bechtel. Now, this is confidence, right? Confidence is the word. We think it's confidence. Okay. Can I ask you where confidence comes from? Confidence to raise his hand anytime something is wrong. Confidence yeah. to approach the management. Confidence of and everything. Beautiful to speak, to t tell your opinion. All right. Not too. Mm -mm. Okay. Good. Basim, big hand for Basim. Any ladies want to share something? Ladies only now. Okay, تفضلي اختي ايوه Again, he's not biased, but it was my call. You are um, تطوير بعد؟ Yes. مرحبا. Okay. I'm Huda Matar, I'm uh, the compliance management lead. I believe in safety and I practice that and I think this is the success. When you believe in something and when you translate that in your actions, this is the success. Your mission will be there. It will be obvious, it will be shining and people will just wonder what is it? I will follow. Sorry. Are you a Toastmaster? Uh, no, see, see, not. Dr. Abdul Karim, even non Toastmasters speak from Tatweer. MashaAllah. Big hand for Huda. Thank Big you. hand. <laughs> Fadl uh, from um, Saudi Arabia, ex Aramco. Why should Salam I? Alaikum. Alaikum salam. Fadl Al Salam, a former project manager with Saudi Aramco. And uh, as you all know, that health and safety and environment is a one main ma one major planning project management so for us to be successful in our projects we don't just measure it on the cost and you know delivery on time it's also on safety and you know mi mishaps and uh, accidents that's how we evaluate our project whether it's successful or not depending on the safety that we provide and we believe in uh, you know leading by practice and walking our talks yeah. as well as preach what you, I mean, uh, practice, what you practice what you preach. Exactly. Mashallah Thank Fadal. you. Thank you, Abu Thamar. Akhran. Thank you very much. It's my first meeting, Alaf okay. Thanks for coming. And by the way, Fadl comes to our Bahrain events, not, be, not, not only because it's after the causeway. He actually comes all the time. Thank you very much. Like Dr. Mustafa said, what do we do in safety? Give me the answer quickly. What do we do? We save lives. All right? save lives but today let me tell you that all what we know all the qualifications that we have all the knowledge and standards that we try and, and learn and by heart sometimes can go away just because you're not confident enough to talk about it or to communicate it in a beautiful way so today I'm gonna show you one accident my accident okay I'll take you through my accident first of all I know you guys love accidents huh like safety people there's an accident happened. <gasps> he's, he's happy, Annie. <laughs> Today I want you to be happy because I have an accident. This accident will teach us a big 
a big concept in safety, which is missing. And then we will go through the risk assessment. We will do risk assessment today. Are you happy with that? Okay. We will see the five hazards, top four hazards we do as a safety trainer, as a safety speaker. Top four hazards, okay? And then we will talk about three controls, control measures, how to become a successful safety speaker trainer so that people take action. We want people to take action. We don't want them to say, mm, mashallah, very good training. Mashallah, and then no action, right? So we want action. So what can you do on stage just by speaking that people will take action? Isn't that magic? Let us see. Let me take you first of all through my accident. The accident that opened my eyes. This is my story. Now, first of all, can you find me in the picture? No need. The most beautiful person there. <laughs> The most handsome one. Anyway, this is me when I graduated from University of Bahrain immediately to Alba and the power station. Power station. I was a combined cycle operator for 10 years, 1993 until I joined the safety team in 2003. New safety guy. I thought I know safety. What is safety? Emergency exit. What is safety? Gloves and Googles. What is safety? Fire extinguishers. That's all I know. Easy. Safety is easy. But then when I joined safety, it's a whole new world. Big world. It's a big ocean. A lot of human relation is there. A lot of people management is there. A lot of things are there. And then one day, anybody know this guy? Raise your hand. His name is? Ron McKinnon, all right. He was brought to she department in Alba. He was our manager. After four o'clock, the duty is over in Alba. I was in the room alone. This man opens the door, looks in the room. Nobody's there except Muhammad. And I was working on record keeping. New safety guy, record keeping. Kalas. And he says, Muhammad. I want you to send me your personal goal. Again, what? Your personal goal. You mean, you mean Alba goal, something, safety goal? No, 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 your, your personal dream, your personal goal. <laughs> what personal goal? I'm doing record keeping. I'm doing Alba job. What is personal goal? No, I want your dream, your objective. Have you seen like this before? The manager comes and asks about your personal goal? Wow. I kept the record one side. I opened a new Word document in those big PCs in 2004. And I started writing my dream. He went back to his office. He said, send it to me by email. Now, what is this picture, ladies and gentlemen? What? So what's my name? Muhammad Ali, so, <laughs> I don't know, I was thinking something like this. I heard about something doctor called the Toastmasters, and they have World Championship of Public Speaking. I don't know about it, so I wrote exactly those words on the screen that you see. Next year, the rings of, not boxing, the rings of, will witness a new Muhammad Ali. I sent it by email. I was mistaken. Next year, I didn't become anything. It was one year and a half where I represented Bahrain and became one of the top 10 speakers and the first Arab to reach to the World Championship Finals. <laughs> so suddenly, big news in Alba. Safety, speaking, what's the connection? OK, good. Good job. Good job. All over the news. Alba was happy. In the newsletters. Shake hands. Pictures. Celebration. Hmm? Does your company celebrate your personal achievements? Raise your hand. Huh? Does your company celebrate your personal achievement? Thank you, Ayub. So I was happy. Even in, in Alba, people saying to me, hey, hey, champion. 
Hey, speaker. Hey, Toastmaster. They don't know Toastmaster. They mean speaker. Mr. Speaker. All right? But soon, the party was over. Khalas. Finish. Muhammad, Habibi, finish. Get back to? Yeah. I'm just happy now, huh? I'm famous. And now you tell me, get back to work. Okay, Ma'ale, no problem. And one day, I wanted to do what the management wants. We want to see you outside. Go out, go out. Don't stay. Don't stay in the office. Yalla, go out. So, I was doing a patrol. Not this one. This is another patrol. I was doing a patrol. And I reached to the marketing department. And usually we talk with the boys. And I told them, what's the problem? Just a safety talk. They said, Mr. Muhammad, we have this spiral leather metal outside. Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Well, uh, it is, you know, it's on the walkway. If people walk, they will bump their head into the steel because it's not clear. Okay. What did you do? Well, we raised an... Who knows what's S-O-R? Yes, Ibrahim, of course you know, huh? Safety observation report. It's a people-based program. You just interact and you do peer observation. Uh -huh. And then you do what? Report electronically. So safety observation, you know? Report. You raise the report. Okay. What happened? Nothing. Three months, nobody came. Nobody did anything. Guys, what is the solution? Wallah, Mr. Muhammad, we should paint it with yellow. We should paint it with yellow. Okay, do you have the paint? Yes. Do you have the brush? Yes. I give you permission to paint it. I told them, I give you the permission to paint it. Bye-bye. I go to my office. After three hours, I receive a call. Can you come, Mr. Muhammad? Can you come? Yes, I went there, and they painted the ladder. Mashallah, mashallah. Three months problem solved in three hours. Good job. Next time do like this, Habibi. Because safety observation report, if you remember, says what is the... Huh? What is the... When you fill an observation report, it tells you what did you take as an action. And usually people don't take action. They just send it to the maintenance department. Kalas, I did my job. That's not job. Is that an action? These guys took an action. I take the photos. I go back. And I looked at this. I told them, don't forget. It's always safety observation. You know? Action report. Mm. Mm. And I look at this. I was sitting in my office. This is a good case study. How can this spread in all Alba? If everybody takes action immediately, what will happen? We will save lives. Other than just report, I have 45 safety observation reports. Give me a golden card. Numbers, quantity, not quality. But this one observation was quality. But how can I make all Alba know this? How can I do that? I'm just a safety, you know? Just a safety guy. I cannot go to the top management and tell them, make an issue, make a memo. La. So I said that, and I created one presentation called SOR that, you know? SOR. What is SOR, Shabab? Yuhallak. Okay? So we don't want SOR that go down to the drain, forgotten for three months. We want SOR that soar and take action. Okay? How can I do that? Thinking, thinking, what am I good at? What can I do? Aha! Uh -huh. Speaking, yes! At least I know speaking. I go to Abdullah. Abdullah, give me the opportunity. I want to speak. I want to do a presentation. 
Ahmed, you know, Tuesday, we can book the hall for you. It's free. All Alba can come. You have my permission. Go ahead. I do the booking. I put the presentation invitation. I go on Tuesday to the hall, and it was full. Full. I thought people forgot the safety speaker. No, they didn't forget. It was full. I delivered the presentation with the pictures of marketing. I go back two weeks. People from maintenance come to me. Mr. Shukri, Mr. Shukri. Khair, khair, sire. We have a problem in our pot line. And there was an aluminum sheet about to fall. It's hanging up. What did you do? As usual, we went to do a, you know, S O R. But we remembered your presentation. We remembered the presentation, so we decided to take. We decided to take action. And we brought it down with the scaffolding, and problem was solved, and we saved lives. And we want to thank you for that. Here are the pictures. Now, how many stories do I have? <laughs> how many stories do I have? First time, how many story? Next time, two stories. I'm booked again. Department, another department. Everybody's inviting SORs that soar. I became famous again. <laughs> became famous again. <laughs> I want to finish my accident report. This was my accident, and I learned three findings. Finding number one, if you have a strength, don't step on it. And I tell you, it's not easy, because your close friends will come to you and say, La, La, Muhammad, this will, my akil aish. Right? Don't do this. And he's your friend. You eat with him sambusa every day. No? <laughs> and he will give you a good advice. Muhammad, la la, you have to be like us. Don't be different. Be careful. Be careful. If you have something strong, embrace it. What are you strong at at your work? Not what everybody does. What do you do differently? Number one, strength. I was sitting in my home after leaving Alba. And then I receive a call from Saudi Electricity Company. Skikov. Can you become safety consultant for one year? What's happening? They are, they are doing the new five-star system as a roadmap for 18,001. You know five-star system? And we are experienced in five-star system. They said, we want one of you, to, we want you to come help us with the five-star system. Sorry. I cannot come. I'm in Bahrain, family, big family. I don't want to go there. Call me again. They call me again. Why do you want me? You are good in five-star system. I will give you 29 others. We are 30 safety people good in five-star system. I will give you another name. I have two dozens name. They call me back. No, we want you. Why do you want me? Muhammad, many people know five-star system, but not many people can. The only thing they told me makes me different is speaking. I was chosen for the deal, and I trained around 1,000 supervisors. Daily, daily basis. 1,000 supervisors to get their buy-in on the new system because you know supervisors hate new systems. So I was, I helped them in all that. You know, my strength was the something that made me different. Number two, accident report. If you want to be a king at work, take speed, king. <laughs> It's very amazing. All of you are professionals. Just add a little of speaking powder. Just add that, and you will witness. This was taken from LinkedIn. 
He's a consultant. He wants a, he's asking people, followers. I have this company who want to release their employees, 24 employees, Bisarhun Ammal, Muwaddafin. And I told them there are, there are five, 25 employees, but four of them, sorry, four of them are highly paid. I told them, remove the four. Ma'ashat al kabira, sarhuhum. Nishtabun sarhuhum al baagi. Release the four. Why release everyone? He said, la. Read it in Arabic. Igrub al Arabi. He said, no, I cannot release these four people. Read why. The client said, frankly speaking, those four are the face of in meetings and events and they have high speaking presentation and communication and I don't want to lose this advantage although they don't add to the company other than that but they are good speakers I will not release them are you with me just because they are speaking do you have in your company some people who are really outgoing speaking they will not release him. <laughs> you will not be released. So, speaking, if you want to be a king, take, speak, king. Okay? And number three, story. I don't want to convince you. I finished my story. Did you hear my story, Alba? Raise your hands if you were touched, if you have a heart, yani. all of you have. <laughs> Were you touched? Number two, raise your hand if you decided to take an action. Don't tell me the action. MashaAllah, look. What did I do? What did I do? I just shared a story. Add the story. We are bad in adding the story. We think safety is purely technical. It's not technical. Safety is not purely technical. And I'll show you one evidence, all right? So we were going to Saudi Arabia last month, and there was, and there was a, a presentation from Bahrain to convince the Royal Committee in Jubail to take one project. They said, we need some speaker in Arabic from Bahrain. So I went, I still told them, give me the presentation. They gave me the presentation, all right? And we were driving. To Saudi Arabia to the meeting royal committee big companies coming and my 20 minutes will make a difference they will say yes or they will say no I told the lady well uh, the presentation is nice but there is no story I will add my personal story la 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 Muhammad don't take risk la 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 these are government people la 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 you know government people madam galbiani these are government people, these are serious people. I told her, this is my art, leave it to me. Okay, Allah is there. This is the exact room. Big project in Saudi Arabia. And my 20 minutes will make all the difference. They will say yes or no. The presentation is there, I started with a story. One day I was in Canada and in Canada, Okay? They respect food in Canada. And I told them the story, what happened. <laughs> and when I finished, they pulled me and they said, yes, yes, yes to the program. Can you deliver this to our chief executive? But especially with the story. <laughs> we have so many slides. We have so many numbers, statistics, and what you love is what? If you don't put a story in your safety training or presentation, bye-bye. Nobody will take. If you want people to take action, share the story. Shlon, how? Don't ask me. This is not a public speaking course. If it's a public speaking course, I will show you the evidence. So today, let me share with you four unsafe acts safety trainers take, okay? We safety trainers and safety speakers and safety supervisors and safety leaders, we have four unsafe acts. By the way, everything here I will send it to you, inshallah. 
Okay? So uh, you, you will, if you take my card there, I will send you the presentation and I will send you something else. All right. So number one, ignoring public speaking. Number one mistake, ignoring public speaking. Wallah, safety means uh, knee bush. And we forget the point that we need to change people. We need to change hearts and minds. It's good to take all this. And we think it's enough. Ignoring speaking. This is my picture in, in, in Jordan, Al Aqaba. Everybody was doing a big safety inspection, Madri Shino, and I was the speaker for the conference. But because I didn't have the safety shoes, <laughs> they let me speak to the Jordanian beautiful people, mashallah. And we had fun with safety stories. And Okay? Ignore speaking and you're down. Number two. The unsafe act, complacency. What do we say to people and management? Wallah, you guys, you don't care about safety. You are complacent. You are also complacent. You think, I'm not talking to you guys, okay, just an example. We think that people will do because they will have to do. Ghasban alayh. When he comes to my presentation and I speak about safety, ghasban alayk itsawi. This is our attitude. Maybe we smile. Maybe we are good to them. But we have this attitude. Al Qanun Habibi. This is the rule. This is the company rule. So we think things will go okay. That will not go okay. Number three. Telling, telling, telling instead of teaching. Put it down in your papers now. Talking is not teaching. Listening is not learning. Again, do you want to hear that again? Put this in your presentations and your trainings. Talking is not teaching. You know your school, you know your kids, where do they go? What do the teachers do? They talk. 33 do girls are in my daughter's school. And if the teacher is talking and they are listening, is that training? No. So talking is not teaching and listening is not learning. Number four, when you don't add your personal touch. If you don't add your personal touch, wallah, I have a presentation if you don't talk about yourself I will not trust you if you don't talk about yourself they will not trust you now most of you here you don't know me right when I told the story of Alba 20 minutes story how do you feel with me now do you trust me even if you don't know me before I know many of you many of you know me but I tell you this, if people don't know you and you have a new safety training, new batch, you're going to Abu Dhabi, like mashallah, Rafa Rayat Najawad fi process Nibush, huh? And everybody else, if you go somewhere they don't know you, you think your training skills, your speaking skills, your wow, they will believe in you? They will not take action. If you don't talk about yourself. And that's what I do everywhere, by the way. If you don't talk about your personal story, you will be nervous. All the way. Tell your personal story, and you will be involved with the trainees. So four unsafe acts. Everywhere I go, Shabab did the Kiron home, this is our maintenance services this is my 18 months project on behavior safety this is my biggest achievement in Alba one and a half year only I'm really proud of that because of a behavior change habit accidents went down culture went up in one department this is my case study everywhere I go I went to Mumbai Jordan everywhere I talk about this talk about your Achievements. Talk about your accidents. Make it personal. Okay? So these are the five, the four things. We will do a risk assessment. In Training Magazine, Middle East, 
I published an article called The Hell and the Heaven with Safety Training. صراحة جحيم. <laughs> safety trainers, raise your hand. Safety trainers, safety trainers, mashallah. Is it an easy task? It is not. It's tough. It's tough. So you will receive that article when you take my card. You will receive the full article. But I'm sharing with you quickly, first of all, the hazards. The hazards. So those people who talk to each other again, okay? Again, talk to each other and take one hazard in safety training. What is bad about safety training? What is difficult about safety training? And Medina, you should share with someone. Try to share with someone because you are a safety. We have a lady safety officer. Give her a big hand. Give her a big hand. Mashallah. Lady safety officers, tell him or tell her what is difficult in safety training. Even if you are not a safety trainer. Shunu shay wa. Yeah. My name is Ali Hussein Ahmad. I'm the head of health and safety department in Almayed Contracting Group. So uh, most difficult uh, thing in training, I'm as a trainer in uh, confined space in H2S. Most difficult if you don't know about the information or you, yeah. you don't uh, gasp it or you yes. don't uh, get it uh, very well. So that's why if you don't know about it properly, you will fail. And if you are not sure about yourself, this is the other. Yeah. Mashallah, mashallah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. One I'm more. Sayed Hassan. I am a chief supervisor for Sanad Company. Uh, the difficulty is to, uh, it's to deliver the information to the guys. It's uh, about uh, the language barriers. Uh, more than that, they don't, they don't care about uh, staying for longer time to get the mo mo uh, all the information. Exactly. And Who agrees with Sayyid Hassan? Huh? Language barrier and they are pushed to the meeting. Pushed. Good one. Yeah, and more, more than that, uh, if you have only one, uh, one, one style to deliver the information, if there is yeah. any situa if the situation changed, yes, you, you just, just stuck. Say it, Hassan. I'm just interacting with you. Yeah. One way, yalla, click, click, click and read, click and read, because talking is not teaching and listening is not. Give it to Say it, Hassan. Give it to Say it, Hassan. Yeah. <laughs> one more. One more. My name is Yasser. I'm working as a project manager for... Uh, so many Yasser's in safety. Yeah. Sorry. Allah is Uh Yeah, I'm working as a project manager for uh, a company called Kumia. We are uh, taking care of rigs in Saudi, yeah. working for, as a, a contractor for Aramco. Uh, one difficult thing in safety, I find out that when we are in the rigs, people are not following the instructions. Which is, yeah. you keep talking and talking and talking with them about the safety and how you follow up. I had one incident that uh, we make an alarm for H2, uh, uh, the safety for uh, H2S. And the guy, I was giving him the training there for uh, this safety uh, induction. He was saying, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. no need, that, yeah, just pass this point. I know what to do. And then when we alarm that uh, time, he was like confused. What I'm gonna do here? So, <laughs> yes. You know, people Very are good. not following the instruction. It's so language point. communication barrier. Thank you, Yasser. Thank you, Yasser. Be <laughs> ahead. One more. Okay, one more. Oh, my name is Munir from uh, Alusel Company. Yeah. So the most important the meeting, you have to commit it in that time. Your timing. Yes. Timing speak. Yes, timing. Yes. yes. Okay, I will finish soon. <laughs> And we will, we will make questions. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. One day I was going into line five expansion. So many contractors. And this guy was doing welding without a fire watch. I know a little Hindi, so Arbab, what is this? Stop. Where is the fire watch? Communication, la? Okay. Here, no, 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 not this watch. What is a fire watch, everybody? He's a person who stands there and does nothing. And he has to watch. He should not do anything. If he wants to go to the toilet, welding stops. Hot work stops, right? So he's doing the hot work. Mafi fire watch. He, I'm, I'm trying to tell him. Where is your supervisor? Foreman Kidderhead. 
and the supervisor sees the safety guys from Alba coming. They are coming, they are scared. Jow, jow. Huh? And they said, sir, what happened? What happened? I said, where is the fire watch? Excuse me, what is fi fire watch, Habibi? Fire watch. One person, he has to do this. And I explain, explain to him. He knows English bad. And when I finished, خلاص? Okay. You know what to do? Yes, sir, I know what to do. What will you do? I will go to the stores and order one fire watch. <laughs> See, communication. Bureau <laughs> we order fire watch. It's very dangerous, guys. You are right, yes, sir. Communication and ba communication barrier. So, these are the five hazards you face in safety training. Number one, it's all about attitude. People come and they think safety is unnecessary. Should sure safety. We don't have time. Yalla, khallas. Huh? I was doing the safety training for one press in their place, in the, say, in the room. I was teaching safety. Suddenly, the, say, the executive comes inside and says, I said, mashallah, mashallah. The company executive is coming and checking on us. Mashallah, I was very happy. And then they told me, you know why he came? He said, what is happening? Safety training. Shunu safety training. Ruhu shughal, habibi. You go to work. Yalla. So they think it's unnecessary. Money is first. Even the workers, they will come to you. Shunu fight is safety. Does zini, does us. They are pushing me. Adil, this attitude, how will you solve it? How will you solve this attitude? presentation you cannot number two hazard number two unclear now sentence and in, in law you know law enforcement sentence yani hukum. Huh? Hukum hukum people think when they when they send them to safety what did I do wrong? what did I do wrong to send me to safety because usually if you send the employees to safety yani they made a mistake right so they come to you they hate you right so they come to not to a safety presentation they come to a safety presentation okay so they feel bad they feel criminals right Adil. So what will you do with this attitude? Hazard number three. What's in it for me? If I go to IT training, if I go to HR training, Habibi fiha shahada. Yes, we have certificate. There is promotion. Safety training. Shunofi. Shunofi. Mafi shay. Nothing for me. Adil. They feel mafi faida. No use to come to safety training. They will look, look at you like this. Number four. Do you know this? Your safety trainers. Have you been through this scenario? You'd start the training with them, and suddenly, a start, a start, they say to you, Mr. Muhammad, Naam. this training should be for our manager, Muhagna. Right? This training is not for us. management Why do they feel like this? They go, they want to apply. Nobody's giving them face. I was doing food safety for a brand, big brand. And the supervisor, food supervisor came to me and he took the booklet. He was so happy. He said, Astad, I went with this book. And went to the fridge and I was checking the temperature as you told us Lenafi Harara fi temperature, right? And the supervisor comes and says, Shitsawi, what are you doing? This is food safety training law. You sent me to food safety training law. Trikana kal kalam. Kaliwali. You know Kaliwali, everybody. You know Kaliwali, right? Ahsan, let us use Kaliwali. Everybody say Kaliwali. Kaliwali, what are you doing? <laughs> huh? And said, Antum Tarshini. So some, some junior people, when, you, when they come to your training, they feel mafi fighter. Frustrated. Ahbat. Malinhum ahbat. Ujayin taihin fi chibdik enta. You know, yeah, in English, in your liver. 
<laughs> anyway, so number five, five hazards and safety training. Number five, safety training is not, not attractive. When you read the article, you will find answers for all five, okay? But today, to finish it, I will give you three top controls and I will finish now. Okay? Everybody loves this hierarchy. So we will follow this in safety training. I will only focus on three ones. Elimination and engineering. Just three tips and we close for any safety training and safety. Okay, you are ready with that? Ready or la la? So why elimination? Elimination is the strongest one in safety, you know? Strongest measure. If you apply that, everything will be okay. Number one, elim eliminate. When I was called to Skiko, five-star system was got the buy-in from top executive, from top management, manager class, and now they gave me the middle of the hamburger. Who is the middle of the hamburger? Supervisors. 1,000 supervisors, they get orders to apply the five-star system and they don't want to fire. Headache. So most resistance was coming from the supervisors. And that's why they want to want someone to train. <laughs> they had safety engineers, but they want someone from outside to convince who is there. So I went there. You know, every day I have only five hours and 50 people, 50 angry people. To convince them of the five star system and the 72 elements and Madrishino, Madrishino. All this I have to convince them. How shall I do that? I start with a. Yalla. Afi alaikum. Give yourselves a big hand. I started with my own electrocution accident. I was electric shock. I got electric shock in 2004, if you remember. At home. And I was. On the verge of death. Now, what's, what company is this? Saudi, you know? Saudi Electricity Company. They had 11 fatalities this year. People in substations, they just become a piece of, you know, coal. خلاص يتفحمون. That was really bad. So, I know they will not talk. I start with my story electrocution and I say all my story now I am a safety expert I did a mistake la? I did a mistake I did an accident Aib. it's not good that I did a mistake but I say I said that I was electrified when I finish Shabab Shukran Aita did you see something like this before? One time you speak, every time you want to speak. So one man speaks, other man speaks, everybody's encouraged. What happens in the room? Everybody's touched here. Because they hear about death. Or near death, near misses. They were talking about near misses. Alhamdulillah, I didn't die. But they share. When they share the story, خلاص, the rest of the course was smooth. Autopilot. I was on autopilot. No resistance. Resistance is only, how can we do this? What is this element number? Bang. If you want a hard time, go through the presentation and they will. <laughs> if you want a, a nice time, start with it. That's the elimination. Because when you tell your story, you build what? Trust. They will trust you. If you build the trust, they will follow you like this. Elimination. I do this. 
Every time, all the time, any course, I start with a story. How many stories did I say today? Can you repeat? You cannot, maybe five, maybe more. But each one of them, I convey the message. Number one, education. Number two, substitution. Jawad is here. Jawad Hayat. No, Jawad Hayat. Jawad Hayat is, is a safety encyclopedia in Bahrain to me. Now, I'm very proud that when I went to Washington, my coach was Bahraini. And even in safety training, I go back to him. Jawad, Jawad, Jawad. Thank you very much, Jawad, for all the learning I had from you. And still I'm learning from you. And many Bahrainis are benefiting from Jawad. So I was given a difficult task in Australian College of Kuwait. And they are sending me to teach laboratory safety to PhD holders. MBA, PhD, master. Australian College of Kuwait. One thing I learned from Jawad, Muhammad, don't tell them. Let them always don't dump the safety concept. No. Ask them. Don't give answers. Trainers don't give answers. Trainers ask. And he taught me how to do this, and I let them do the case study themselves. All the course, five days, terrible days. <laughs> and they told me, when you go to Kuwait, in Tibet, be careful when you go to Kuwait, don't ask Kuwaitis to stand up and speak. This is not Bahrain. <laughs> and I made them, all of them stand up, thanks to your advice, and they gave their report. This is a doctor, by the way. They finished their case study, and they will tell you what they learned. This is training. There is a rule in adult learning. If I give you my idea, I will be committed to it. If you give me your idea, goes here. If you, as a safety guy, if you go to the people who are working and tell them, this is wrong, this is unsafe, they will listen now, and when you go away, everything goes away. What should you do? Tell me, what should you do? Question. Kebab? What's happening? Is it correct? Okay. Can we make it better? Can we make it better? Ask them. And if they tell you, they will embrace it. You have children? Children? Have children? Don't tell them this is wrong. Tell them, what is wrong, Habibi? What is wrong, Habibi? Wallah, I should clean my, my place, Baba. Thank you very much. They will never forget. So substitution is substitute telling with asking, sharing. Let them do it. And you sit back. Finally, engineering. And for this, I'll give you one aid. First aid. That is AID. Use this structure at the beginning of your speaking and training. Three steps. Eight. Number one. Start with attention. Don't start with, Salaamu Alaikum. Of course, Salaamu Alaikum is good. My name is Muhammad Shukri. I've been working for Alba 17 years. And I was safety superintendent. And I was... <sighs> You know what I mean? It's boring, Habibi. We don't care about you. My You have to start with attention. They have iPhone, Habibi. iPhone is much more smarter than you. So you start with something really interaction. What did I do today? What did I start with? Huh? La. Talk to each other. Kalamu ma'abad. Shagaltkum. Saddaktu. Bisiyallah. No, that was meant to be, okay? So, make something attention. Fil bidaya, Put a picture, start a video. Don't start the training immediately. That is ta'jil, okay? Number one is attention. Aid, first aid. Number two is interest. What is the interest? 
Why should I listen to you? I was doing for a big hypermarket safety course for the cashiers. The cashier, I remember, was sitting there. I told him, what's your name? Introduce yourself. And why do you need this course? Adil? He said, I don't need this course. I don't need this course. I'm the best cashier. I'm just a cashier. I don't need it. After one day, I made him afraid. <laughs> this is the problem. They think they don't need safety. I grabbed his attention. I put horrible videos. And we did some exercises so that he feels he is in danger. If you are a safety trainer, and if you don't make people feel in danger, mm -mm. sorry, what are you doing? Yes, our job is to scare people, really. Because they are not scared. So what is the interest for him? Show him what will he get. Number three. La, okay. I use the letter D. I don't mean drama. I mean your story. Okay? Beginning of every training, apply the first aid model. Then do the training, Habibi. And I promise you, every time, you will be successful. Don't say, this is chemical safety. I don't have a story. Mafi, you have a story. If you don't have a story, what are you doing there? If you don't have any experience, who gave you the authority to train safety just because of your nibosh? You are not been through any safety management. You have not done any accident investigation, nothing. And you are training us. Safety training is not just books and telling the books. It's about going through safety management, going with people. And I think Alba really was a big school for us okay, and every company. I finish with this quote. Now, first of all, who said that? Carnegie Institute of, you know? So they sell technology. They love technology. But look what they are saying to you. 85% of your financial is due to your and ability to negotiate and lead. Shockingly, only 15% is due to your technical knowledge. And tell me the truth. We safety people, how much percentage we give to our technical knowledge? 80%. We feel that knowing more, mayosh, ayosh, huh? Makes us better. La Habibi is how you communicate. And I thank Yasser and all the BHSS. They are allowing this forum to communicate. And I'm telling you, take every opportunity and go out and speak to people. You learn safety in Alba, in Bag, in Babco, in Tatweer. Don't keep it for yourself. Go and teach. And I think Ayub will like this story, Ayub, our fire chief. One day a supervisor was giving a five-minute talk. This is my final story. You love stories, la? Okay. Last story, Tahmeloni. He was telling the five-minute five fa safety talk. Okay? Beginning at the work. So that day it was about evacuation, fire evacuation. One of the employees, he, want, he goes home and he tells his children how to evacuate. Best. Today, wallah, fi Alba. Today we were in Alba and they talked about fire evacuation. Habaibi, my children, this is evacuate fire. He says, after several months, my wife and I reached home and we saw our home on fire. Our home was on fire. Our kids were inside. And we were crying. We don't know what happened. What will our children do? And the fire brigade told us, here are your children and they are safe. I went to my kids and I told them, Habibi, what did you do? How did you escape? He said, Baba, you remember one day you came back from Alba and you tell us that fire evacuation talk? We applied it exactly, Baba. In safety, we save lives. But if we don't communicate, and if we don't communicate sincerely, powerfully, 
nobody will take. Nobody will take. So, ladies and gentlemen, will you take? Raise your hand. I don't want to know the action. That when I say bye-bye, you will take. No, I want to hear. You will take? Action. You will take? Action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for tolerating. Yes, questions, yeah? I'd like really to thank you a lot for this uh, film, I can say, or a theater. Uh, one of the things really I learned uh, during my life uh, that it's very important to maintain a relationship with the people, with the employees. When yeah. you go to the site, I found it is in two ways. One, from one side, you want to maintain a relationship, but from another side, your employer wants you to catch, for example, photo for unsafe act. Yes. And then you will have to take a photo for this employee okay. in a wrong position. That will affect, for example, his uh, status or uh, promotion with the co uh, contractor. So here is very critical, I find that, for every safety leader. To be a leader, you should be balanced persons. I mean, you should not harm the persons that will lead you to lose the relationship with him. And the yeah. other hand also, yeah. uh, on the other part, you should also be careful that when you report something against employee. Okay, good. Can so, yeah. the other question is that, do you encourage to take a photo for a person in unsafe uh, position? And the other things also about the giving the training. Do you encourage to show a horrific photo for someone with the cat pieces during our uh, training today. Okay, so uh, one of the things we changed when we started the safety culture in Alba again is give them the security. You know, the, everybody's afraid to report. You know that. Accidents, they are afraid to report. Near miss, afraid to report. Nobody wants to report. Adil? It took us a long time until they believe that if you give a near miss report, you will get a mug. A mug بعطيك هدية. Took time. Building relationships, Sayyid Ali, takes time. But we in safety, we are not there to be liked by people. Our job is not for you to like me. If he's killing himself, he's putting himself in danger, you need to address this. Okay? So, you can have the right approach. Taking photos, it's a big thing. It still is ongoing. You can ask him, take his permission, and show him, Mafi Mushkila. Don't worry, Mafi Mushkila. I'm just taking this, nothing against you. Everybody will help you. But if they are afraid, it's the culture problem. It's not your problem. It's not the manager problem. Culture Mushkila. If the fear is there, Mafi Faida. You have to build from the beginning. Shukran Sayyid. Question? Assalamu alaikum. Muhammad Al Aysa, GPIC. شكرا محمد على البرزنتيشن مالك يا اخي جدا ممتع واتراكتف يعني نفس ما قال الاخ محمد ان سيفتي از ا نوبل ميشن اند الكوميونيكيشن اند الكوميونيكيشن ستايل يوف براكتس تونايت از ا سكيل اوكي يس وي نيد تو انهانس اور كوميونيكيشن سكيل but I just want to emphasize on one point, is that the safety is protecting people plus saving life. If we didn't protect people, we cannot save life. Yes. Okay. So the first thing is that we leverage our knowledge and safety. If you leverage your knowledge, then you will be aware about what is going on. If you are facing difficulties in your companies or your organizations, if you are not getting the right focus from the management, try to align your strategy with the company strategy. Get in the same line. Support the company, core activities, in a safe manner. This is how we will succeed as a safety leaders and safety practitioners and people those are having the safety culture among themselves 
Okay, so safety is everybody's responsibility. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mohammed. All right, so I encourage this. Uh, of course, we can uh, encourage this communication in this uh, society, of course. So I thank Dr. Mustafa again. He is a role model of safety speaking everywhere. MashaAllah, he's thank inspiring you. us. Big hand for Dr. Thank you. I counted if there are 365 days in a year, and each day, I gave at least one lecture yeah. over 50 years. I must have given 30,000 lectures. But believe me, this is the best lecture I ever did. It, it was so touching, so beautiful, so wonderful. We learned a lot, Dr. Mohammed, from you. And I called you doctor because I want you to be the first Bahraini uh, with a PhD in safety. Thank you very much. Okay, <laughs> do, do, do that. And also, I want to say that safety is everybody's personality. What Muhammad doesn't know, how much I used to fight with Alba for safety. The last thing before I left was the storage of carbon <coughs> by the seaside near Citra, which was open storage. And I argued that's so dangerous for Bahrain. They told me uh, we cannot cover it. It costs 200 million. I said maybe in Alba's gener generous expenditure on everything, but in GPIC, we did a whole urea plant, including a big storage for 180 million. So this should be 2 million maximum and not 200 million. I will get you the contractor. And I fought. And a wonderful Bahraini, Ahmed Naimi, stood by my side. I fought for one year. I said, haram for Bahrain to do this. You'll spoil the whole of Citra area. They agreed. Also. I must thank GPIC because they sponsored. Not that I have to do anything with it. Uh, we exported Jawad to Alba to change the safety and produce such a wonderful person. <laughs> and you have no idea how much trouble I had with Jawad. <laughs> it was not easy to put him the way you want. He had his own mind and uh, intelligent. And I'm glad that we in Bahrain cooperate in safety. Yes. Safety has progressed a lot, believe me. We have uh, some big companies, small companies. I hear music tonight. I gain. You have no idea how much I've learned tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's correct. That's correct.